Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy and this video is a short presentation on plots of effect size statistics which would complement pairwise comparisons using the estimated marginal means function in our studio. Now this video here very much builds on previous videos uh, that I would have up on the YouTube channel and I'll reference them at various points and the reason for that is just it allows me to kind of get to the focus of the video as opposed to kind of everything that built up to that. Okay, so the first part here is we're going to look at just generating a data frame here. So the data frame quickly explained without going into too much detail. The detail can be in the previous videos, which I'll mention shortly. Looking at 90 participants, uh, there's a between subjects factor that has three levels, a within subjects factor that has three levels. And uh, basically it's just setting the properties of the data frame and this is what we end up back with. I'll, I'll just view that so, so for those that might not have seen any of my previous videos you can just see look what this uh, data frame would look like. So participant ID between subjects factor, factor with three levels within subjects factor with three levels and then the uh, continuous measurement. So without uh, skipping the steps of checking for model assumptions or, and everything like that it's just going to basically look at a linear mixed model first. There is on line 22, you can see here that I'm linking to another YouTube video that I have, which explains the logic uh, to, I suppose, the arguments to the linear mix model. So you can look at, uh, you can go to that for reference here. If we just generate this here, we can see when it comes to group as an effect, there's no, um, not significant. Time is significant and then the interaction between the two is not significant. That's fine. Again, not the purpose of this video. The next thing though is we do want to generate the estimated marginal means because we want to uh, calculate the effect size statistics that will I suppose complement those estimated marginal means. So to calculate the estimated marginal means, well I suppose in practice you would look at doing a graph so you'd look at a plot of the estimated marginal means and um, that uh, on line 28 I reference a video that would help you towards that. Then it's a case of maybe generating them, estimated marginal means and seeing which ones are significant. So here I'm looking at the simple main effect uh, so within time one, time two, and time three, uh, comparing the various groups, group one, two, and three against each other to see which ones are significant and so on like that. Now it's very, as you can see here at a quick glance, none of these are significant. Again, not the purpose of the video here. The purpose of this video is to generate the, is to plot the effect size statistics. Uh, but sometimes what you find is even though the results are not significant, the effect size statistics would help inform a, maybe a power analysis that you might do for another future study. Next step then is to generate the effect size statistics. So again, the logic to the uh, to the script here is explained in the video that I'm giving a link to on line 34. So you can look at that video and you can see the logic to, uh, I suppose, the arguments to the F size function. I won't explain it here. But essentially, when we produce, uh, work out the effect size statistics, what we can see in this case then is we get back our effect size at the various time points. So time one, two, and three, we get back our effect size for the differences between the groups, which is our between subjects factor. And we then get back the composite interval of the differences. And for me, that's enough. That's all I really need. I have my statistic and then I have the margin of error around that statistic. And essentially what I will do now is I'll do an error bar plot on that. There's functions within our studio that will do this for us. I suppose what I like to do, I suppose, is I like when I generate my reports that there's a consistency with how my graphs would look. So often for me, I would like to isolate, I suppose, the statistics themselves and then to build the plot around that. So I would generally use ggplot then when it comes to doing my various plots, okay? Because I, I feel I'd have more control over, I suppose, the formatting of that and there's going to be more consistency between box plots that I might have, estimated marginal means that I might have, and in this case, the plot of effect sizes. So that's why I, I'm doing it this way. So on line 37, this is where there's the output for the effect size uh, statistics, which I'm calling EFF. I'm going to put that as a data frame and then I'm just isolating the variables of interest. Now, in a way, we could nearly skip this step, but I suppose it just gives a bit of focus to what we're actually going to be plotting here. So I'm just going to, so this is, I suppose, just isolating again the effect size statistics, and in this case, then with the plus or minus, uh, with the composite intervals, which are obviously plus or minus the margin bar. And these are what I want to uh, plot then. Very simply done, and very similar to the video that I would have done previous on estimated marginal means, to how, I suppose, the logic to the script here. So I'm going to use ggplot2. Within ggplot2, I'm looking at the output, which is of the effect size statistics that I'm interested in, which I just shown there from line 44. Within the arguments, so the x, x axis will be the effect. So what is actually the effect? What are we actually plotting? The y axis then is going to be the effect size, which is obviously going to be our statistic. And then I'm going to be splitting that with respect to time. Okay. Um, then I'm going to just, again, the next bit then is just formatting it. Okay. So looking at the points. 
I want to plot points essentially what size do I want those points to be and I don't want the points to be all overlapping so I'm going to use the position dodge then I want those points to be plus or minus a margin of error which is going to be the compass interval so this is where I'm getting the GOM bar and then again I'm going to use position dodge for this this is the default version I'll edit this now uh, in a, a couple of um, seconds I suppose to a certain extent but this is essentially now a plot of the effect sizes okay plus or minus the margin of error which is often how I would like to present my statistics again this is the default and for those of you that might be familiar with my previous videos you'd know that I be a big advocate of look up formatting these uh, graphs and tables well or trying to do that and uh, in this case here I would my next part would be just to format this graph maybe am I happy with the colors for t uh, red green and blue am I happy with the text size Am I happy with the actual the labeling of the axes and so on like that? And so these are always a little, a few little bits of uh, pieces of tweaks that I would do to this. So my logic here to what I'm going to do here is I just want to label my axes so that I'm going to take my previous graph G1. I'm going to label the axes. That's what the end of line 54 does. It just labels those axes. Line 55 scales the axes, and line 56 then at the start just looks at the text size and line uh, along with just moving. I suppose the legend I. I I'm kind of in this state of where I like the legend to be below the graph as opposed to the right of the graph and then line 57 is where we just look at coloring what colors we want to use and here I'm using cyan blue violet and steel blue and if I run that graph off here this is what I end up with and you can see there on the left hand side aside in the y axis or the vertical axis we have the 95% composite interval of co uh, Cohen's D and that's essentially what is being plotted here is Cohen's D's and so for me, this is then the plot of the effect size statistics, okay? And this is something that I would often find would be quite useful, and this is how I'd look at presenting it. Maybe not these exact colors, but I suppose I generate the effect size statistics using the the, EM, the pairwise comparisons from the EM means, and then I would uh, compile them, and then use ggplot then to graph it, okay? And, and when I'm going using ggplot, I would feel I'm very much in familiar territory, and if you look back on my previous videos that are up on the YouTube channel, you'll see that's a very, very consistent, uh, I think, approach to how I'm actually producing these plots. And this is what I find works for me. Okay. So look, that's it for this one. Loads of ways of obviously to be plotting effect size statistics. More than happy for uh, any viewers to maybe comment below if you'd other, um, I suppose, suggestions to plotting these effect size statistics. Uh, equally, if you've uh, thoughts to maybe or opinions on uh, future videos that you might like to be seen on this YouTube channel, please feel free to comment below. And as always, if you like this video, then please feel free to like it, share it. And if you haven't already done so, maybe you, you could subscribe to the channel and then you'd get updates of when the next videos will be uploaded in the weeks and months ahead. But for now, all the best. Goodbye.